I'm Dr. George Flynn, and welcome to the program. Welcome to the podcast. We appreciate you being here. And today we're going to discuss and maybe think about new idea. A new idea. And when you hear the word <clears throat> new idea, what do you think about? Do you think about, oh, this is a disrupting idea? Because we hear about disruptions all the time. They're taking the things that we know about and the things that we have used for years and years and disrupting them. You say, well, how does that happen? Well, you take the taxi cab industry. You have the, the new apps where Lyft and, and uh, Uber and things like that, and it's <clears throat> disrupting the typical taxi business. Uh, the grocery business, the things that you eat, you can now order online. And so more and more deliveries are taking place rather than you going to the stores. So what happens to the brick and mortar stores? These are ideas. <clears throat> and some of these ideas take root. Some of these ideas can make other things that we've depended on for so long obsolete. And some of the ideas are excellent. Some are not so good. I hear more and more people complain about the automated phone system. You call up and you punch one. You got to listen to the whole thing and they always say, because our menu options may have changed or have changed. <clears throat> so you got to listen to all of this long message, push this, push this button, push this. And people just want to, when they call up, a lot of people want somebody just to answer the phone, say, hello. They do. And so what's happening here? Uh, we're being, you know, the more we're automating things, the more we become unimportant, the more automated. You know, the computer, the automation system becomes the most important thing. And there's a new thing out, chat GPT, that you type in a few words, and it types content. It goes out and researches on the internet, and it gives you content. It'll write a book, it'll write an essay, it'll do so many things, and then the author just goes through and finds the errors, because it does make errors, because there are errors on the internet. <clears throat> but this chat GPT, people are using it for all kind of things. And all of a sudden, you're reading something or watching a video or doing something that was created by a robot. It's not really a human that's talking with you. It's a robot. How does that make you feel? Do you want to read a robot's writing? Maybe you do. A lot of people do, but it goes out on the internet and finds all of these facts and figures and puts them together in a paragraph, a book, a, a sentence, a, who knows what it is. But it is coming. It is here. Chat GPT. There are all kind of apps out there. There's an app that will screen your phone calls. There's an app that will do almost anything. And now it will, it will write things for you. It'll make videos for you. It'll make, is it, is it writing music for you? Well, probably is. So we've got this automation, <clears throat> these new ideas, these new ideas that are supposed to help us become more efficient and lay off more people. Now, wait a minute, did I just say that? Lay off more people, fewer jobs, the jobs that are there are a little higher paying or the lower paying. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? And that generally, if you say, who knows what's going to happen, that generally strikes fear into a lot of people because they don't know what's going to happen day to day, month to month, year to year, or 
They don't know who's in control of their future. <clears throat> now we've got to take back control of our future to us. There may be all of the computers and all of the networks and internet and intranets and it's all out there. And I'm not against any of it. If it can help us, great. But sometimes it stifles our imagination. Sometimes we're just caught up in it and we become consumers. Did you hear the word? Consumers of data. Data, I do mean data. Because data now is music. You have, you don't have records anymore, though some are going back to vinyl. You don't have the 78s, the 33s, the 45s, the RPMs on the records. And what was what came after records? Cassettes. We don't see cassettes anymore. Then we had eight track tapes and they were here today and gone tomorrow. And then we had uh, CDs and now we have MP3s, MP4s. It, it's all data is what I'm trying to say. It's just a different method of delivering that data. We have radio, TV, newspaper, mag magazines, online, offline, you know, we've got all of this data coming at us so fast, we cannot possibly consume it all. And remember what we talked about a few minutes ago? We now have a computer writing books faster than we can read. They write a book in you know, 10, 15 minutes and another book out. We cannot possibly consume all of this. And I think I've presented the problem to you or the challenge or the solution. Now the solution <clears throat> may be in the problem. The problem, every problem has within it a solution. And maybe there's a solution that we can think about with all of this data coming at us. You know, there have been all kind of uh, estimates as to how many commercials you see every day. There's been an estimate, 24,000, 44,000, who knows? Everywhere, bus benches, uh, every restaurant, everything, all has data, menus, everything is coming at you. And your brain has to decipher what's important to you. And that's part of our, our rebellion, if you want, want to call it that, against high tech controlling us. Now high tech, may, you may love high tech control. You may want to be a gamer. <clears throat> you may want to stay on the internet all day, all night. If you do, that's great. There are other people that really don't care about that so much. They just want to live their lives without all of this data coming at them. I've even seen commercials on uh, some com computer system that digests all this data and simplifies it and spits out answers. That's what we're looking for, is all of the data to be simplified so that we can understand it and we can make reasonable, rational, realizable choices. We just want to make choices for our lives. We want to, you know, where we live and the relationship in our family. And if you notice, kids are now off in computer land, off in uh, the metaverse, we might call it. And I know that's a Facebook term. Uh, where they're in virtual reality. So the family unit is being broken up a little bit, but the kids are living in, in the computer land or online land or TikTok land or some land, but it's not interacting with the, with the uh, family so much. Mom and dad, they're watching all of, you know, their choice of a thousand channels. Okay, maybe it's only 300 channels, but they've got 300 to choose from. Then they have to make a choice because you, 
as far as I know, you can only watch m one channel effectively. Now, you might turn on two TVs and try to watch two TV channels at once, but what happens is <clears throat> your brain is still your brain and it can focus on one thing at a time. And if you try to do multitasking, you can focus on this and this and this and it switches back and forth and you lose a little bit of time, milliseconds, microseconds, when uh, the brain switches back and forth. And all of a sudden, what happens to your intelligence quotient? It goes down. Not permanently, just down for that time because you're trying to focus on too many things. And you're, you have the, it, I know, I've heard the term FOMO, fear of missing out. And we have all of this data coming at us and everybody's afraid they'll miss out. So we're looking for the answer and the answer is to simplify it. Now that's where I want you to take your ideas and come up with ideas of way to crunch all of this data and take the trash that doesn't change your life, doesn't change your, your financial situation, doesn't change your relationship situation, doesn't change what you eat, doesn't change your, uh, you know, the money you make. Take all of that data and discard it. Focus only on the things that really change your life or significantly or possibly, potentially could change your life. Focus on those. Then, once you've got those handled, everybody says, I just want more free time. Then you've got some free time. What do you do with that free time? Well, you can do what they want you to do, give it to the media, which is fine. Play some games, go outside, you know, nobody's running anymore without things in their ears listening to something, podcast or radio or, you know, TV sound or something, music. But it, it's important for you to be able to, to discern what is important to you. What of all of this material coming in is important to you? Is it important for you to know that the pitcher on a certain team uh, sprained his ankle and his batting average went from a 3.4 down to a 2.8 or something? Is that important to you? Does that change your life at all? That changes that pitcher's life, but does it change your life? That's what I want you to really focus on. What information out there we all talk about information technology, and it's coming at us faster and faster and faster. And it's not gonna slow down. It's gonna speed up. So you've got to have your shield up or your ability to focus on what's really making a difference in your life. That way you can discard the rest because everybody's out there creating content. Everybody that wants to sell you something and a lot of it is to sell you something, something you may not need, but they're gonna educate you to the point you say, I've got to have it. Meanwhile, 15 minutes ago, you've never heard of it. You haven't missed it, you've, been, you've done fine without it, your life's been great, but now you've got to have this thing. Well, should you have paid attention to that or not? That's the question. And that's the question I want you to answer for yourself. What out there, what of all of this data that's coming to, towards you, what of it do you need to consume and what of it do you need to just walk on by, not have anything to do with it? You know, does, does it really change anything in your life? That's the question I want you to ask. I'm Dr. George Flynn. I appreciate having you here and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.